These are designed and built completely by Digium. They have no moving parts. They are rack mountable either in a single gateway configuration or a dual gateway configuration. Uh, of course, they're asterisk based and we are using the Digium GUI for managing the gateway. So it's very similar to the Switchbox interface and the Digium phone web interface. Good thing is you have one GUI across all Digium products so that once you are very familiar with one of them, it makes it easier to manage the other ones, such as the Digium Gateway. Um, just a quick note on some market feedback we've got. Because we are using the intuitive uh, Digium GUI, we've got some great feedback about how easy it was to set up compared to other gateways, how easy it is to configure. Because it's asterisk based, we have a wide variety of codecs available, and I'll just let you read over those quickly. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is the actual gateway API itself. So as you know, in our Switchbox product line, we have an API available that allows you to do a lot of different things to pull information out of Switchbox and push information back into it. And we've done the same thing with the gateways. These are for developers and administrators to monitor the gateways. So say you're a Digium partner and you're selling these gateways into your end users, you can actually have your own application monitoring the health and status of all the gateways deployed in the field from your own web application. You can monitor the status of T1 lines, SIP endpoints, the network interface. You can gather statistics on how many calls are being pushed through the gateway. This is a really powerful and easy to use API. So the API uses HTTPS and JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. I'll try not to get too technical here. Um, JSON is a pretty industry standard way to do APIs. A lot of developers are also already very familiar with it. We do have a web page available that there's a link right here, but we'll also email out the link at the end of this. Um, on this site, you'll see examples on how to build applications with the API. So there's Perl and Python examples available. And then we also have the complete documentation for all the API programming available on that site. And we'll go there real quickly. So with the gate, gateway API examples, you can go here, and we've got an example Perl script and an example Python script. Also, you can go to the gateway API methods and view all the methods, and then there's a page that you can go to for each of these that will show you exactly how to use it. So we've made it very easy to get started with the gateway API. The Digium gateway enables a lot of really cool applications with existing PBXs, legacy PBXs, existing VoIP PBXs. There's a lot of possibilities with these gateways. So I want to go over some of the common applications that we see these gateways used in today. So of course, this is a standard uh, gateway type of uh, architecture here. You've got the PSTN connection, which in this case is T1 or E1, connected over SIP to an IP PBX. But if you notice, there's two IP PBXs there. So in a lot of PBX deployments, two are put in uh, in a redundant manner. And here, the gateway has the ability to automatically fail calls over to either of those PBXs if it detects one of, the, if one of them won't accept the call. Another common application we see is if someone has a legacy PBX and for some reason or another they can't move to a VoIP PBX or maybe they don't want to, you can also bring in your T1 and E1 connections to the Digium gateway from the legacy PBX. So that would be considered a tie line or whatever you might want to call it there. And that would actually connect SIP from the gateway to your SIP provider. So the gateway can accept SIP provider connections and turn them into standard T1 and E1 connections for legacy phone systems. Also, if you're using Switchbox and you have a primary and a cold spare system, you can bring in T1E1 here or SIP providers. That could be SIP as well, any type of PSTN connection. And that will talk SIP to both Switchbox systems. So if the Switchbox primary has gone down, you can set up the Switchbox cold spare to be the failover for the primary in the gateway. So the gateway will automatically send your calls to the Switchbox cold spare in the event the primary is unavailable. And the way this works is the gateway will try to contact the primary server first. So say your primary server came back online, you 
put in a new server, rebooted it, or whatever you needed to do to bring it back up, the gateway would automatically send calls back to the primary server when it became available. It's a really cool application. Also, across the industry, virtualization is growing larger and larger. And one of the applications that we thought of here is using the gateway to provide uh, call traffic to multiple asterisk instances on a virtualized server. Now, the reason you want to do that is because a lot of virtualization engines currently don't have support for PCI cards, so you can't put the standard Digium PCI cards in a virtualized server. Well, here, the gateway is an external piece of hardware, and it will actually talk SIP to all the asterisk instances. So if you have T1, E1 here, even a SIP provider that you want to send to multiple asterisk machines, you can do that using the gateway in a virtualized environment. This is one that we see pretty often. As a Digium sales engineer, a lot of my role, and most of you know, is to help our partners design solutions for end users. And a lot of them have existing legacy PBXs. And the migration can sometimes be painful, can sometimes be easy, depending on the application. But the Digium gateway will make it a lot easier on businesses to migrate to IP PBXs. Reason being is typically you would have your T1 or PRI connected directly to the legacy PBX and then the legacy PBX distributing calls to your phones. Well, now you can put a Digium gateway in and connect your PSTN connection to the gateway itself and have it send calls out T1 to the legacy PBX and then SIP to the IP PBX. So this will allow both PBXs to be active and you can split the calls based on DID or call ID and you can move users slowly at your own pace over to the IP PBX. So this will reduce the burden on the IT staff and help the migration go quickly and easily. This looks like a pretty complex diagram, but I'll try to explain it at a high level. So protocol conversion and transcoding. Because the gateway is asterisk based, it supports a, a lot of different codecs and SIP over TCP and SIP over UDP. So if you're in an environment where you need to convert codecs, Say you've got a number of asterisk machines and you're doing G729 and you want to convert the G729 from your SIP provider to ULAW before it hits asterisk, you can do that with the gateway and that will help you reduce load on the CPU of your asterisk servers and also could allow for more simultaneous calls because now your asterisk machines don't have to handle that codec conversion. So as you can see here, we've got a number of different VoIP equipment boxes sending things in either G711, TCP, or UDP, and the gateway is handling all the translation itself and sending it back out in the native codecs for the right machines. Here's another great example of the use for a Digium gateway, and this is for link connectivity. Um, if you've done research into link, you'll know that it does SIP over TCP and requires some other things that maybe an older version of Asterisk might not do or your legacy PBX definitely won't talk SIP, let alone SIP over TCP. So if you wanted to enable link connectivity between two devices with Microsoft Link, you can use the Digium gateway to convert either the legacy signaling from the legacy PBX, T1 or PRI, to SIP over TCP, or you can, this could be an IP PBX that doesn't use SIP over TCP, and the gateway will take the UDP SIP from your existing IP PBX and turn it into SIP over GCP and allow interconnection between Microsoft Link and the other device on the other side. All right, so just a quick summary. The Digium gateways are at a great price point. Um, they're reliable, they're based on asterisk. Uh, they are designed to be a gateway from the ground up, so it's not scaled down PBX. Fanless and no moving parts, and they're very easy to configure. And on that point, I want to actually pull up the real live Digium gateway and show you how easy it is to configure some of the things inside of it. So this is the interface to the Digium gateway we have running here at Digium. And for example, if you wanted to configure your T1s, you go to configuration and then T1E1. And this is a dual port gateway. So you can go here and say use port one or port two whether to use internal timing or not. So if we go into port one, you can see that your basic settings that'll work for most connections are right here and really easy to use. But 
there's also some advanced options like echo cancellation and you can modify the incoming and outgoing volume to lower or raise them. Then also you've got a lot of advanced really low level options that you can configure here. Now again if none of these are dropped down for most installations this is all you need to fill out are these fields here. The Digium Gateway makes it very very easy and quick to do. But if you needed to do a much more advanced configuration, a much more custom configuration of your T1, we give you all the options available to do that. All right. Next, we have the Global SIP settings page, which allow you to configure things like if you're using TCP SIP or what port your UDP SIP runs on. Um, you can also configure your NAT settings here. We've got SIP level options available on each of these tabs. A lot of them you'll recognize directly from Asterisk. And then you can also configure some security settings. Really cool thing here is you can turn on early media for SIP. Then also you have some fax options. So the, the gateway will handle relaying the fax for you as well. So your SIP endpoints page is where you're going to configure any devices that are going to talk SIP to the Digium gateway. So you can see here we have a one asterisk 1.8 system talking to the gateway and a switchbox system talking to the gateway. So let's look at the configuration of configuring switchbox with the Digium gateway. It's pretty easy to do. So on the switchbox side, you'll have it you'll have the gateway configured as a SIP peer or SIP provider, and then you'll give it a name here, something that We'll let you know exactly what it is when you go to configure call rules. So you can say I'm pointing calls at the switchbox 5.5 or whatever you want to call it. Then this is just your SIP username and password. You choose whether there's no registration or whether switchbox will register to the gateway or whether the gateway will register to switchbox. You can choose UDP or TCP if there's a NAT in the middle. Then you've got some advanced registration options here. And that's really it. So to configure Switchbox for to register to the gateway, there's really only three or four fields you have to fill in and then hit save. Now, if you want to go more advanced, you can take a look at the call settings and modify things like the DTMF mode and uh, call ID settings. A lot more advanced options in here for that. Then also you can choose which codecs that you'll talk to this SIP endpoint on. In this case, it's a Switchbox system. So we have ULAW and G722 available. Um, you can see which codecs are available here. And you can turn them on and off just by clicking these buttons. Also, another really cool thing is once you enable a codec, to modify the codec priority, it's just a simple click and drag. You can change the packetization time on the audio packets themselves. You probably wouldn't have to do that much, but again, the gateway gives you a ton of flexibility in connecting with your SIP endpoints. Next thing I want to take a look at are the call routing rules. Now here's really the heart of the gateway. This is you know, inherently what a gateway does. It routes calls to different devices. So you can do, you can create call routing rules here and drag the order that they're matched here. We're going to take a look at this one we have here, PRI2 Switchbox. Now, so this up here you'll see we have simple entry mode enabled. This means that this is a very basic call rule, but it'll get the job done most of the time. So what you'll do here is name it. So we've named it PRI2 Switchbox. And we say the call comes in from T1. That, could, that means any T1, or we can say um, a specific T1, like port 2 on the T1. Send call to switchbox 5.5. If the call fails, send it to the asterisk machine. If that call fails, send it out the port T1. And it's that easy. Now, of course, you can do much more advanced call routing with the gateway. And that's done just by turning simple entry mode off. Now you have these options here. So you can manipulate certain numbers. So you can say, before connecting the call, I want to trim two digits off the front pre-pin this on and set the call ID to this and that. And that will allow you to modify what the number presentation to the endpoint. 
If you turn match all calls off, you can say that the number begins with these digits and the rest of the number must be this long and then send it through. So you can actually match calls based on what digits the number begins with and send them to different devices based on that. Call routing groups. If you want to group multiple devices together to create a call routing group, so you can say route all calls to this call routing group. Here we've created a call routing group called T1, and as you can see, it just includes the two T1 ports on the gateway. So then in your call routing rules, you can route to specific groups. All right, go through a couple more things in the gateway here. Uh, system administration, pretty cool part of the gateway. What you can do here is have multiple admins on the gateway so that if you've got multiple IT guys or IT people in your infrastructure that are uh, man that could be managing the gateway, you can create different username and passwords for each one of them. Also, of course, you've got your standard IP configuration page to change the IP address of the system. One thing that I find really unique about our gateway is they have a default IP address, which is this right here, 192.168.69.1. So when you plug your gateway in your network, you can connect the Ethernet cable to it and set your address on your, your laptop or PC and then start configuring the gateway right then without having to uh, try to go to your DHCP table and figure out what the IP address of the gateway is. Now we have this option here, also continue using default IP address so that you can always connect to the gateway on this IP address directly from a crossover cable on your laptop or your PC to the gateway. This will help in a lot of troubleshooting problems so you can go directly connect to it. Um, we've also got the ability for you to save a config as a tar file and then host it anywhere. And then you can say this is a configuration and go ahead and pull your gateway configuration from here. So say you go modify a gateway and you want to change, make that change to all of yours, you can push that file to a TFTP, FTP, or HTTP server, put in the URL here, and tell it to reload the remote config. Also, if you need to, you can upload custom HTTPS certificates so that if you are in a security uh, strict environment, that web browsers won't reject the login. All right, this is a demo unit, so you can see there's no active calls right now, but if you wanted to, you can just go to reporting and see the active calls and the calls processed um, in this gateway. And this one was recently reloaded, so. You've got a connection status page here, so you can see the status of the Ethernet interface and what speed it's connected on. You can also see the status of the SIP endpoints, and we can see right now that the Astro system is down and it's unreachable, but the Switchbox system is alive and we've got only a one millisecond latency to it. Then you can also see your alarm status on your T1. So I haven't connected any T1s to this gateway, so you can see we're in red alarm, loss of frame, but no errors. It's just a cable not connected. You can also see your system information, so your software version, how long the system's been up and running, all that information, even the temperature of the system right here. And one of the, a really useful feature that we have in the gateway that's very important to the gateway is that you can do a debugging session. Oops, I hit the wrong thing with my mouse there. There we go. So you can choose what type of traffic you want to capture. You can say only SIP packets or TCP or whatever it may be. And you can choose SIP debug, DTMF, or PRI debug which port, so you can capture the exact data that you want, start the session, and then download the debugging information and review what's happening. So if you are troubleshooting a problem for an end user, you can see exactly what's going on and in a timely manner. All right. All right. Another feature that we have that's also in Switchbox and the Digium phones that I think is really cool here in the gateways is the ability to do tech support in an outbound way. So when you call our tech support team, they'll give you the information to put in here 
it'll make an outbound connection to our support center and then we can log into the gateway. So this saves your end users and end users IT departments the time of having to open a port directly to the gateway or make net network modifications so that we can access the gateway to troubleshoot it. You can just fill in this information and we'll be able to access the gateway there over a secure VPN connection. You can download a backup of the system really easily there. See that's done right there. And then you can restore back by clicking this button and selecting the file that you downloaded the backup of. Software updates. The system will automatically check for a software update. If there's a new version available, we'll notify you. You can go download that software update and then install it right here. All right. That's going to wrap it up for the gateway presentation. If there's any questions, I can you can go ahead and raise your hand and we can unmute your line and then you can ask the question over the phone or feel free to pop any questions you have into the questions box and we'll get them answered as soon as we can. Uh, we have one question here. Can we take a look at the advanced options again? Sure, I think we're talking about the SIP advanced options. Um, let's go ahead and open that up. You've got some advanced registration options here. These are really just low-level SIP options for um, you can set from domain, the authentic authentication user, the SIP port they talk to us on, and then qualified here is how often we send keep alive messages to each other. And that allows us to measure the latency of the two connections. Then you've got some advanced signaling settings, and I'll let you take a look at those real quick. All right, so we have another question here. Is the support for the device the same as for Switchbox, as in a renewal every year? With the gateways, there's no renewals or subscriptions. You get a standard uh, one-year warranty available with the gateways. And it's no charge for an upgrade for software updates. Got another question. Someone's session went down in the middle of the uh, webinar. Yes, we will record this. This webinar is being recorded, and you'll be able to view that at a later date. And we have another question here about um, how can we send calls to a DNS name or public IP address? Well, what you would do is you have to create a, send, a SIP endpoint for each user, and you can put in, um, if you put the gateway registers with the endpoint, so that the gateway has to register with the Astra server, you can put in the host name of that asterisk server here, so asterisk.local or whatever it may be, and that's how you send calls to a DNS name. Got another question about R2 support. The Digium gateways will support um, PRI on E1 and some other channelized signaling, but not R2 specifically. Does it work as an E1 failover device? Uh, that's another question we got. And actually, the gateway can fail over to multiple systems for calls. So in your call routing rules, if you're bringing in calls over, however you're bringing in the calls, if you're bringing them over SIP and connecting to your PBXs over E1, or bringing in the calls over E1 and connecting to your PBXs over SIP, you can have failover routes here. So we're going to try to send the call through Switchbox first. And if that fails, we'll send through asterisk. If that fails, we'll send it out E1. I think that answers the question. If it doesn't, just let me know and we can dig into it deeper. Another question, can we use this across a WAN? You can as long as the IP address that you've assigned to the gateway is routable across that WAN. There's no issues there. Question about E911. The gateway itself does not handle E911. Um, what I recommend most of the time is some SIP providers will actually handle the E911 stuff for you. So if you're using SIP, um, well, for E911 you'd have to be, then you will, I would work with a provider that does E911 to provide that. Got another great question here. Is this something that would work in trying to use a Mitel SX50 PBX to enable calls over SIP lines? If the Mitel has a standard PRI or T1 connection, 
you can take that T1 connection, plug it into the Digium gateway, add your SIP provider to the Digium gateway, and from there have the calls routed from SIP to the T1 to the MISO. There's a question here. If you use the SMB65 Switchbox appliance, which has capability for 12 simultaneous calls, can you still process 23 simultaneous calls through the gateway? So the gateway can process, the G100 can process 30 calls, and the G200 can process 60 calls. Um, you, but you would still need to respect the, the call limits of whatever you have the gateway connected to. So the 65 is slated for 12 concurrent calls. If you sent it 30 and your audio quality went downhill, you would need to, of course, adjust things to make sure you didn't go over that call limit on the 65 side. Can you send calls to an IP address without using a username and password? Um, I'm pretty sure you can. What you do is you create a SIP endpoint and set the registration to none and then just type in the IP address of that endpoint there. So the question I've got here about the MyTel again is the MyTel is not T1 or PRI enabled but has POTS lines. So I'm assuming analog there. Um, the gateway is for digital T1 or U1 connections. You could, of course, use Asterisk with a Digium analog card in it to do the to, you, to provide the same functionality there. What is the price point of the G100? Let me pull that up real quick. Um, so the pricing is as follows. The G100 is 11.95 list, and the G200 is 19.95 list and the rack mountable brackets will cost you $15 for a single unit. Can we download this presentation? Yeah, I think from the reseller portal you'll be available to log in and, and view this presentation again. And the documentation on the gateway is, is the second part of this question. It's great. Um, the site you saw has all the API documentation on it. And then also we have built-in help in the interface of the GUI itself. So when you put your mouse over a question mark, it'll actually pull up really, really good help about each option in here. So great documentation available with the GUIs, with the gateways. Get my terminology mixed up there. How do we only receive traffic from only one or two public IP addresses? Take a look here. but. You could use the access control rule page, and you put in your network here. It has to be a CIDR notation, but if you subnet it correctly, you could limit that to one IP address and then turn SIP on for that. And then for this one, which is all networks, you would turn SIP off so that SIP would only be allowed on the networks you specified it on. Got a question here. Can it be used as, with a channel bank as a station gateway? We wouldn't recommend the gateway being used in that configuration. It's really for uh, provider to PBX calls and PBX to providers. It's not a uh, phone gateway. I don't know a better way to say that. But Another great question here. Once debugging is activated, how do we look at and see the results? So if you go in here to advanced debugging and you activate it, what you'll get is a oh, – keep hitting the wrong button with my mouse. You'll, once you hit start de debugging session, it'll ask you how long you want to debug for, and then it'll present you with a way to download a file. It'll be a text file that you can open up and view the debug that was requested. Got another question. Do these gateways fall under your demo program? Give me one second here. Okay, so you'll need to talk to uh, your Digium channel account manager, and I think We'll provide them under the same demo program as Switchbox or the phones. Um, but yeah, that's who you would need to talk to you about that. All right, looks like the questions are starting to slow down. I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share, um, but I'll stay on the line for a few more minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So it looks like we've got a question from LeVon. Give me one second and I'll unmute your line. There you go. Feel free to ask away. Okay, concerning the question that was asked earlier, uh, the SIP to uh, analog 
uh, like for the Mitel 50 or for any PBX that has legacy trunks on it, is there is there any reiterate? Is there any way to to use the gateway for that? You can't use the Digium G100 or G200 for analog connections. It's only for T1 and E1 digital connections. Now, yes. we do have the traditional PCI cards that will work for analog connections that you can put inside a server and load asterisk and use that as a gateway. But the gateways we're talking about today are for T1 and E1 only. Okay, so you'd have to use asterisk for the, uh, as the gateway versus the... E100 or 200? Correct. For okay. analog lines. Okay. So, I've got another question here. Is there a way I can take calls from a PRI and send them to a SIP phone, vice versa? Um, it, it's technically possible, but not a supported configuration of the gateway. The gateway uh, is intended for calls to go to and from PBXs. So, it's technically possible, but then you would lose any type of features there and we haven't tested interoperability with phones talking directly to the gateway, so that would be an unsupported application. Looks like we've got a question from Robson, so I will go ahead and unmute your line. Yeah, okay, uh, so if you're using uh, um, the G200 so that I can connect one PRI port to the um, telephone provider and so they can, and it can send traffic, integrate with another PBX like uh, uh, another PBX that has another PRI port, so you can send traffic from the telephone company to that PBX, but also route some inside the, um, let's say the SMB65. I understand that the SMB65 will only handle about 12 uh, simultaneous calls, but uh, could uh, still have a 23 going to the um, to the other PBX? And yeah, you absolutely can. Um, so the gateway can handle, the G100 can handle up to 30 calls, and the G100, G200 up to 60 calls, and the concurrent call limits built into the 65 won't affect the call limits of the gateway. So if you're using the gateway and connecting it to a 65 and a legacy PBX, you could still have up to 30 calls being passed by the gateway at one time. Okay, because the calls will never hit the SMB65. Uh, Depending on how you have it configured, you know, you could split them off by DID. Again, if you send 30 calls to the 65, you'd be able to call them at that point. But um, yeah, as long as I keep the them 12, as, as long as I keep them 12 uh, simultaneous calls going to the SMB 65, I should be okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like the questions are starting to slow down, so I'll leave the webinar up for. About another five, maybe ten minutes. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be here on the line. 